Hello and welcome to That British Homestead. My name's Nick and today we're going to be tackling the weeds. It's been drizzly weather and it's been absolutely awful down here in the plot. So we need to tackle the plot. Honestly, I don't know, even know what I'm gonna do because it's so many weeds. It's like I just need a hand. Do you want a hand? Yeah. <laughs> Joined down here on the plot with the right pear plot. Hello. Hi. Oh my God. Well, the, 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 <laughs> Ali and Trisha. Ali and Trisha. And Jasmine. Ali and Trisha and Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're all going to be helping me because they're so lovely and we're going to be sorting out the weeds. We are. Yeah. Now my, my plot's always been very nice, yeah. you'll be able to see. <laughs> I've taken some before uh, footage, they'll probably be seeing that now. Like, with the drone and we're going to begin now so join us on our journey so whilst Bob's trimming we are going to tackle my favourite part, the tomatoes. Okay, well this is going to be a bit different for you. What do you mean different to me? So if you see the suckers? Uh, I can see lots of suckers. Okay, instead of just putting them in a pot, <laughs> yeah, we're going to put them on the compost. <gasps> I know, I know it's going to be difficult. So oh. you take the pot, you just take the sucker off, mm -hmm. you put it on the compost, yeah? Okay. Do you think she can do this challenge? I'm thinking probably no, probably no. Just not, tell me the varieties of the tomatoes not, again. I might not have that one. <laughs> not any of a thousand tomatoes. <laughs> I can't help myself. Right, let's get it. So Ali and Trisha actually came down to help me out with the old weeding because it just it has literally got away from me. Not only is this the perfect year for weeding, the weeds are growing very, very well. But I've had so much going on this year that I've just I've just fallen behind and it's been one of those things where when you fall further and further behind, it's so difficult to get back on track if you don't have someone giving you a helping hand. And I'm very grateful that they came and helped me out. And this falling behind has spans back months ago. So before I even had Andrew, I had I was obviously very heavily pregnant and I had something called pelvic grind pain and I kind of talked to you guys a little bit about that before. Um, and that's why I was doing so many sit down and chat videos with you guys um, because I was just unable to walk. I wouldn't have been able to walk from the car park um, to the allotment, which is only a few yards. Um, I was in so much incredible pain and my hips were awful. I did manage to horse manure the beds, but I just didn't have it in me to do the wood chipping as well. Like literally, I didn't have it in me at all. Remember I was very heavily pregnant at that point in time and I did the best I could. I did manure the beds and etc. But I just couldn't bring myself to do extra loads of wood chip because it was just so painful but I knew it had to be done like I've said before I do prioritize you know getting these things in I know I, I must be mad I just must be anyway um so I had all of them issues and I ha also had a condition where I had too much water I cannot remember the name of this condition because it was just such a long word and I never remembered it I'd always say to the doctor you know the one with where I have too much water and I never thought that was a massive issue but having too much water and I had a lot more water than I should have uh, put extra strain on my body put extra strain on my weight on my hips or extra weight on my hips I should say and I think as I wasn't really you know, getting up and doing stuff, and I'm a super active person, um, as you probably have noticed, but because I wasn't able to do anything in my later pregnancy, I just sat and ate, so I gained tons and tons of baby weight, which is really bad, if you ever know that, don't, don't do what I did, so they all added to my hip pain, the more weight I gained, the more hip pain, you know, I got, it was just one of those things. But sadly, because of the extra water, I ended up going into labour early. So Andrew was actually premature. Um, so I gave birth to Andrew um, at the beginning of March. I actually went into labour, right? And it was at 4am. And I like woke up and I was just covered in water. And I was like, oh my goodness, it's time. And Bob's jumped out of bed. There's just water everywhere. 
you know, and which, what is funny, because my paternity, no, maternity, sorry, had started, I think it was like five days before, like, what good timing is that, it's madness, so anyway, um, I was there, my waters had just gone, and I was just like, oh no, what are we going to do? I uh, got out of the out, got out of bed, and I was just absolutely covered in water. Like I told you, I had too much water. And I said to Bob, I can't go to hospital like this. And we had to go to hospital. Funny story. Because before, I actually wanted to have a home birth, and I was just like... I had this idea that I wanted to have this like really empowering home birth and I was super excited about it. We talked about it with their midwife and all the doctors and they were like, yeah, fine. And it wasn't until sort of the last couple of weeks where in the UK, if you're not from the UK, they can't actually tell you you're not allowed to give birth wherever you want. You're allowed to give birth wherever you want in the UK. However, they can say, in my medical opinion, I don't think it's right for you to give birth here. And that's what they said to me. They said like... In, like, my medical opinion, and my midwife was amazing. So, like, I literally would listen to her say anything. She was like, I just don't feel that I have the facilities to keep the baby safe if anything was to go wrong. So I said to her, that's fine. I'm just going to come to the hospital and give birth and come straight at home. I'm only going to stay there for, like, an hour. That's what I did with my eldest daughter. I just came in, gave birth, went home. And that's why I was like, oh, I don't really want to go to hospital. It would be less stressful to be at home. Anyway, um, so I was like, that's fine. About a week before I actually gave birth, they were like, that's no longer possible because of the too much water. The issue was, is when you had as much water as I did, you can actually, when the water goes, you can actually sweep down the umbilical cord and it get trapped in the birth canal. And that's very dangerous. So they said, no, you actually have to labour the whole time in hospital. So I was like, right, fair dues. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter, does it? As long as the baby's healthy. But it was like a big shock because I had this whole idea that I'd give birth in my own home, surrounded by my loved ones, etc. But it's fine. Um, so off I went to the hospital, but I was like, no, I have to change. I'm not going to hospital. You know, you have so much dignity, don't you, before you're actually in labour. You're like... I I'm dignified, I must go and get changed before I go to the hospital, I cannot be seen in this state. So I, I quickly went to get changed, just like change my underclothes sort of thing, um, because they were dri dripping wet, and it was awful to be dripping wet. And Bob's like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. So he gets Jasmine dressed, I've got dressed, and we're like literally on the way to the door, and my water went again. Because I'll tell you, I had so much water every five seconds, the water's going, water's going, water's going. And um, it just drenched me all the way through. So I'm like, oh, I'm all wet. Bob's like, there's no point, just, just get in the car. So get in the car with the hospital bag already packed and all of that sort of stuff. Luckily, I already packed that. I think I only packed that like two days before or something like that. So I didn't expect an early baby. I expected it to be late. Um, my daughter was actually, I went into labour on my due date, and I didn't give birth for four days, so I was like, there's no rush, people. Anyway, so I'm like, waddling to the car, you know, as you do, and what was going, I, honestly, I tell you, we had to get the car completely vacked out, because, let's just say that the car seat's never been the same since, get to the hospital, and, um, yeah, everything's fine, just chilling, I'm not actually in labour yet, but, like, I'm still losing the water, and I actually had to use one of those incontinency pads to hold in all the water, you will have no idea how much water you have inside a human body, it's ridiculous, I was like, you know when you watch TV and you're like, how women dramatically lose their waters, I was doing that every, like, five minutes, it was ridiculous, anyway, we're there, got my birth partner, I actually brought my laptop in, did a little bit of editing, um, because I didn't want to, like, miss a episode, you know, uploaded, or, um, a video uploaded, and I filmed loads the night before, I actually was in the middle of planting my tomatoes, and I just remember being in the hospital, and I was so upset, I was like, oh, my tomatoes, but I was like, who cares about the tomatoes, don't worry about it, but I think, like, I'm one of them people that I need to have something in my mind to take my mind off the pain and everything, and it was so good to have, like, this out outside thing to worry about that's not very important, it helped me a lot, you know, something just to draw, draw my mind on and I could talk about with Bob. And it really does help having something you just completely takes your mind off of, you know, what you're going through. 
So I was in labour and everything was good, but sadly, more complications. Andrew ended up having to be delivered via C-section and for the first time in my life, I have to tell you, I was so thankful that I didn't get what I wanted. I am so grateful to have been in the hospital at that very moment because Andrew was very, very poorly, it turned out, and even though um, he was delivered via C-section, there was increasing complications. He was born what they call born flat, so he was born without a heartbeat, so they actually resuscitated him, and I'd say the NHS staff were amazing. I could not have asked for better paediatric care for him. They were amazing. I literally owe them my entire life. And they resuscitated him, and they were just epic. I actually didn't know this was happening because obviously I was having a C-section, so you're not able to sit up, but my partner was able to see this, and he was just so strong and so wonderful. Um, and they were able to do everything perfectly for Andrew. You had a little baby cry, but sadly I wasn't able to meet him. He had to go to the uh, NICU, so he ended up going to the NICU for four hours um, just to check that he was okay. I did a lot of pumping, um, and I was very blessed with my milk coming in super early, so I was able to pump um, and send that down for Andrew so that they had everything they needed down there. And uh, Bob went with Andrew and I obviously went up to recovery. Um, it turned out that Andrew had sepsis, so he was being treated via drip for sepsis, um, which was just devastating to find out, honestly. Um, it's absolutely fine now because Andrew's fine, I'm fine, everyone's fine. But at the time it was absolutely terrifying. So we ended up staying in hospital for much, much longer than I thought, but I was so grateful to get him the help that he needed. Um, I ended up having a infection as well, um, and I was on a drip for an infection, um, which was absolutely fine. Uh, we got reunited about the four hour mark, and it was just absolutely magical. Obviously, um, being premature, he had issues with um, sucking, so he really did struggle with the latching situation. It took us days to get that right. Um, and being being born via C-section meant that he had lots of like gunge in his stomach that he had to like vomit up, which was um, an experience as well. But I'd never experienced any of this before. Remember, I had a normal birth with my first daughter. And you can't help but compare. And I'm just like, oh, Bob, this is not how it was before. And he's like, I'm sure that it was very similar before. You just don't remember. Because it was nine years ago. He was honestly a rock. I was unable to like get up or anything for like, the first two days. And bless him, he was like going home, sorting out all the baby's washing stuff and, you know, bringing me back things, get picking the Jasmine up from school, then bringing her back up the hospital so that she didn't miss out, and then going back home, sorting dinner out, sorting breakfast out, packing her a packed lunch, you know, and then coming straight back up the hospital because he was spending all day down the hospital with me as well. I don't know how I'd have done it without him. He's amazing. Um, and I kept saying to him, like, you have watered my plants, right? You have watered my plants. <laughs> It's so funny now. But once again, it's one of them things that I like to have something to worry about that's so unimportant, you know? It's not something that's so life-changing that I was going through. And it's just too much. I was like, Are you, did you water my plants, babe? And he was like, yep, 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 yep. Remember that, right? So anyway, um, we were going back, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I actually ended up on Mother's Day. So the day before Mother's Day... Uh, Andrew came off his drip and he was perfectly fine. He got, he was absolutely fine fit. He was amazing. He really was. He was getting all that sort of chubby fat and everything like that. He was great. He did have jaundice and it did turn into long jaundice, but that's not uncommon with breastfed babies and it's not uncommon with premature babies. So he had no lasting effects. So I kind of look back at this with um, like the eyes of everything being okay. So it's not that bad. 
uh, when I look back at it, it's a, I'm not going to say an amazingly positive experience. However, it is an amazing experience because my baby, he's amazing. He's absolutely perfect in every single way. Um, so yeah, um, I came home on Mother's Day and it was, it was funny because when we were leaving, they did say, oh, he's, um, he's very, he's very orange. Has anyone spoken to you about jaundice? I was like, yep, we've already had all the treatment for jaundice. And I'm like, well, you might have to go back under the light. Obviously you'd do anything if, if they're not well. So I was like, that's fine. Um, but they decided that he didn't need to, he just needed to keep an eye on it, which would be my midwife coming over later. And she was amazing. So he was absolutely fighting fit. He was gaining weight. You know, he only lost 5% of his body weight, considering everything that happened. It was absolutely amazing. I honestly, the, the moment that he got his, um, his drip out was just great because it's absolutely awful. And it, seeing that and it's just you just don't want to pull it or anything like that it's just really difficult to see as a parent because he's in pain and all the blood tests and stuff they have to do was just it really broke my heart watching him in pain it was awful um but we got discharged and that was an amazing experience we went home on mother's day and i was in absolute agony from the c-section and i completely understand that some people have c-sections and they're absolutely fine with them my one of my very good friends and my sister-in-law was saying to me i don't understand why you're in so much pain nick because we had six c-sections they didn't say like together like we had c-sections then they told me individually like i had a c-section it wasn't so bad but it, i was in ag absolute agony i don't know why i just was i was taking my paracetamol and i take my ibuprofen i'm doing everything that I could within my power and one of the things that I found was absolute game changer was mint tea oh, I tell you the amount of pain I was in just absolutely dropped down when I had mint tea um I did end up splitting up open my c-section twice uh, because once isn't good enough people so once because um I was gardening and I wasn't meant to be gardening and I fell off the, the uh, garden bed um which I know I shouldn't have been doing and that was very painful, I split over my C-section, which was annoying. And then once, because Bailey and Jasmine were playing, and Bailey accidentally knocked into me and split over my C-section again. It's very fragile, it just splits open. So that, that was an experience. And then it got infected, so that was very painful too. But my, my point is, as you can imagine, with all of this like aggravation and all of this poor baby and all of that sort of stuff, I wasn't really, the first thing on my mind wasn't like, oh, well, let's get on with this weeding then, as you can imagine. Um, but I was going down, um, I think it was the 10th that I came out, if I believe that's Mother's Day, but you have to remember that my, my memory is a little bit foggy around this, this particular portion of my life. Um, and when we came out, I was in a lot of pain. I couldn't bend or anything. If you look back to the, to the videos that I made um, around about that time, not the ones that I put up that I that I did earlier, but the ones I actually made, um, you can see I, I was in so much pain that I couldn't really bend down and I had people bending for me uh, because it was just so much nicer for my poor little stomach. It was just, I was in so much pain. Anyway, I I was getting better each day. Each day after a C-section, you cannot believe how better you feel each day. And I was still like cleaning and airing it out and all of that sort of jazz. If you've had a C-section, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but it was getting on slowly. So I did get lots of people to help me. My mum and Bob actually put in my potatoes on St. Patrick's Day. So about a week after, we went ahead and came out the hospital. Um, I also sowed a load of seeds then, so carrot seeds, um, little hint, none of them germinated, so that was just interesting to, to know. I've uh, re-sown that particular patch of soil, but I did do that, and I really struggled to do it as well with my pain in my stomach, um, so that was well worth it. And basically, we just kind of like played it by ear. I had a lot of help. You know, my friend Deborah came in and she actually did a load of the planting out for me because of the struggle that I had planting into the ground. I think the first thing I actually planted by myself 
was the tomatoes so they've got like a little shine in my life and I was so worried about them being okay oh and I was going to tell you this Bob didn't water my plants at all and they all got very stunted and that's one of the reasons why the all of my pepper plants and that were so stunted not his fault like I told you he was doing everything within his power to like move heaven and earth to make my life easier and just forgot to water them so I'm not begrudging him at all at the end of the day who who really cares because at the end of the day we could have just gone out and bought starts at the end of the day we could have just not done the garden so I'm not blaming him at all he is an amazing human being and he puts up with me so you can imagine how much he just truly suffers um and basically we did a whole load of like little mini jobs but once again we didn't really prioritize the weeding i did a load of weeding he did a load of shrimming um but it just was getting over you know on top of me on top of me on top of me so basically i was speaking to ali me and ali do talk quite regularly anyway but she offered to come down and i was like ali, you can't do that you live like an hour and 15 minutes away from me but she was you know no i want to help you i'm going to come down um and it was amazing probably it probably the baby cuddles kind of like persuaded people i personally think that andrew is the cutest baby in the world so that kind of like would sway anyone surely so anyway, she came down and it was so funny because um, she came down. I, I honestly couldn't believe that she was going to come down. But she came down and I was in my house and we were like getting all the seedlings sorted so we could bring a load of stuff down. You know, it's like it's like a great migration when you go down to the allotment, you've got a lot to do. Anyway, and I heard this Canadian voice outside and in my neck of the woods, you don't really get a Canadian. So I was like, it's them, it's them. So we came out and we had a big hug and it was the first time we met in person. We've spoken a lot of time via text messages and stuff like that. And it was like, we've always known each other. It was an amazing experience. And when she came in, we chatted, I showed her around, you know, the debris of my house. And normally when people come over, I do like a big dinner and like, you know, cook my heart out and show them like everything that I, you know, made and things like that. This time wasn't possible because of like the extension and everything like that. It just was going to be too stressful for me. So we actually ended up going out for dinner, which is lovely, don't get me wrong, I love to go out for dinner, but it isn't like the amazing like personal touch that I really like giving to people. Anywho, we went over to the allotment and we did a load of weeding, that was the first day, we weeded the second patch really really well, when we say we, I'm going to not lie to you, it was 95% Ali and Trisha that did everything I was just like feeding and maintaining a baby um which is not helpful when it comes to weeding so they did a load of weeding and we talked we talked we had some great chats guys like we talked about everything and it was like oh goodness we had a right natter you can see that when we're together we're having a right little chin wag and we're like finding out everything you know that you don't know over text it was absolutely amazing experience she's just absolutely wonderful and so Trisha just wonderful to talk to so we had a right giggle and um we were doing so much weeding and it was actually like super late and um, we didn't even break for lunch that day and Bob phoned me he was like are you coming home like what are we gonna do for dinner and I was like babe I'm weeding like you know priorities and that but we are like a 4 30 dinner family so like when I'm telling you 4.30, like 4.30 on the dot, dinner's on the table. So obviously I've got young children. So when it rolled around at 6 o'clock, everyone's starving. So we broke and I was just like, oh, let's just put one more thing in. And they were like, you know, we are here tomorrow as well. And I didn't know that. I was like, really? You're coming tomorrow as well? And they were like, yeah, dude, we've booked a hotel. We're staying, you know, etc." And I was just absolutely blown away all over again. I could almost feel like crying because who does that? Who drives over an hour and a half, you know, down to someone? I knew they were staying in the night, but I didn't know they were coming the next day. I thought they were just staying the night. You see, we're not very normal when it comes to things like this. Me and Bob will drive to, like, Devon in one day and come back. Uh, we actually drove all the way down to Longleat for my daughter's birthday because she wanted to go to the safari. So we drove from London 
all the way down to Longley uh, it takes about three and something hours and then we went round the um like the drive round for safari it's amazing you should go um and then we came straight back so I was just like no babe they're staying overnight because they're normal people that don't like drive an hour and stay there but no, 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 it's just us that drive three hours, like a six hour round trip. We're like, that's doable in a day. And um, I mean, we went to Birmingham and we did that in, you know, a round trip in a day. I think that was about three hours. So six hours of total driving. Anyway, they ended up staying over. I was just absolutely blown away. What people are that kind? What people do you know that would drop everything and come and help someone? This is what I'm talking about. The community here, the gardening community on the YouTube, is just absolutely outstanding. They, you guys are the kindest people ever. Ali is, Ali and Trisha are the kindest people ever. But you guys are the kindest people ever as well. Because I got so many messages being like, are you okay? How are you? Beautiful. Like, I can't express to you how beautiful the stories of like, when you guys had children, etc. And it was so touching and I felt so moved. Especially in like the beginning times when I was just, you know, at home. Um, I was at home and I couldn't really do things. I'm a super active person and I'm really social. So I felt super lonely and I felt like the community was so much keeping me going. Like, you know, like feeding my need for sociability when I was at home alone. Couldn't drive. I literally live, like, where there's nothing around me. Bob went back to work, so I didn't have him. And he was honestly a rock. I cried when he went back to work, which he's like, if you know me in real life, you'd be like, no, she's not that soppy. But I was, and I cried. I cried hard. I was like, don't go back to work. And he's like, no, I need to go back to work. Of course he did. Hormones, right? Makes you crazy. Um, but, yeah, can you imagine... What sort of people come down and do all of that for someone that just like had a few casual texts? Well, not a few, probably thousands of texts with because we like keep in contact and chat and everything. But who does that? It's absolutely mind boggling that she did that. Anyway, late that night we went out for dinner. Okay, and in my humble opinion, best dinner takeaway, right? Not takeaway, but like eat out is Toby Carvery. And I'll tell you why. Okay, because Toby Carvery is a roast dinner, okay? And if you don't know what a roast dinner is, it's like roasted meat in the oven with some boiled vegetables with mashed potato or like roast potatoes, which is just an oil with gravy, right? Brown gravy, like beef gravy. It's amazing. It is literally a work of art. Now, if I was going to cook myself a roast dinner, it would take forever, about three hours, right? and it would take all the dishes that I own and I'm currently washing up in my bathroom sink so you can't believe how much I appreciate I appreciate anything that anyone cooks me right so I have to say that I 100% appreciate it however a roast dinner is just a work of art and as a British person I have to say I really enjoy a roast dinner okay it's like that and tea it's just two things that I just really really value in life and the roast dinner we had was amazing, probably because I was so hungry, but I enjoyed every mouthful of it. It was absolutely amazing. And they had the potato dauphinoise, which are just like out of this world. And they had mac and cheese. And you know what? I know it's an Americanism, and we don't really have it over here on our roast dinner, but mac and cheese on a roast dinner just works, and it's really good with gravy on it. It shouldn't work, should it? But it's really, really good. So we had that as well, which is good because Jasmine's favourite dinner is mac and cheese. So we had that and it was just such a great experience. We'd spent all day together and we're still chatting away at like very late at night. And then we had dessert. I didn't have dessert because I'm trying to shift some of this baby weight. And not that you ask, but I have lost seven and a half kilos, which I personally think is absolutely amazing. Um, I'm not rushing it off though, don't get me wrong, I'm being healthy because I'm breastfeeding. But I just feel like I don't need a cake. Well, I do sometimes have a cake, but I didn't have a cake that weekend. So, and then they came round in the morning, which I was just absolutely blown around, blown away with. So we went straight over the allotment, you know, as you do. 
and we just got to work and we did a load of weeding we had a really great time trisha and bob went off with jasmine to go and get lunch and we actually broke for lunch we had sandwiches with a packet of crisps and some of these air fried donuts which i've never tried before but they were really good and um we just went ahead and you know just absolutely had an amazing time sitting down and having a right good chat and Bob did all the shrimming which was really great Jasmine helped do a load of weeding and all of that sort of stuff and it was absolutely mind-boggling that we got so much done and it was such a good time I was I've never been so tired but so like saturated in just social ability i'm a, like i said i'm a bit of a social butterfly um with certain people i just and they're the sort of people that you could just speak to for about a million years and still have something to say to them maybe it's just me because i'm a chatterbox but i just had such a fantastic experience and everything just got thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for coming Thank you for inviting us down, Nick. We've had an absolutely amazing time. Any time. If you want to weed, any time. I'm surprised I've got any tomatoes left, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I took two suckers, that's it. Three. It three. was three. Oh, it she's was, counting. It was three. It was three. Who's counting, though? <laughs> <laughs> You're just as bad. Look at all these. How many tomatoes have you got now? Uh, 116 now. Is that with those three? That's with those th two. <laughs> three. Oh, three. there is three. There is three. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 116. <laughs> Next you're going to be Just in rehab, I reckon you'll be oh, in no. tomato rehab. <laughs> Alright, thank you so much. And maybe next time, let us know, would you like me to go over to the right pear plot? You're welcome any time. I reckon that's going I to be the next thing. No? <laughs> I would. <laughs> See you later. Care, See you next Mom. time. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Prepare yourself for a very cringy video. <sighs> Hello, my name's Nick and welcome to That British Homestead. Today, well, I just feel so overwhelmed with all these weeds. I just don't know what I'm going to do. So I guess I'm going to get going and get some weeding done. Do you want a hand? <laughs> I cackled. Wait. <clears throat> yeah, ready? Right, so when I said I feel so overwhelmed and I think I need a hand, yes. you will jump in, ready? Both of us? Yeah. All right. You need to get out the shop. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. I just... Hello, my name's Nick, and welcome to That British Homestead. Today, I'm just feeling so overwhelmed with this wheeze. The weather's been awful. We've had tons of rain, and it's been drizzly. Perfect reading weather. So, I'm going to have to start again, Jasmine. We used your bit. Your bit was perfect. Okay, right. Thank you so much. That's why it takes so long. Right. Okay. Take 400. <laughs> well, let's do it again, really. <laughs> this is going to be a bit different for you. Okay. Don't matter, we've got mine. I will just do a swap a Rooney. Yeah, she's going to take that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs>